In this video we're going to have a look at setting up some basic X topology curves, creating some curve networks and using the X topology surface to generate a definition over the network itself. The video breaks down into two sections. In the first section we'll just have a look at drawing X topology curves um, and the constraints that you can put on them uh, at point level and over a range of points. And in the second section we'll go on to use the dynamic snapping capability of the curves to create a curve network and then use that to generate uh, an X topology surface. So in this first section we'll have a look at drawing curves and the constraints that you can apply to that definition at point level. So X topology curves are very much like other curves, like the B-splines and the polylines, but they have quite a lot of additional capabilities. Um, they have the ability to have um, certain constraints put in them to make certain shapes and the ability to stick together so that they can create a curve neck for, for generating a surface. So starting out drawing an X topology curve it's just like drawing a B-spline. In fact at this state it is a B-spline. You can go in and edit it, you can add points, uh, delete points in exactly the same way as a, a normal B-spline curve. But we can also add some constraints into its shape. So if we wanted to make a point and knuckle line, we can click K option. And these are also reflected in the uh, options down here. So we can add a knuckle point, we can make that uh, an intersection point. We can give it a Y tangent. So there's lots of different sets of curve level tangencies. We can also insert a straight segment. Uh, we could also import or set specify a blend. So it's as simple as really just designing your curve and that's ultimately where the whole idea of design intent comes from. So therefore making something like a, a midship section for a ship is pretty straightforward. So if we just draw four points All we have to do is put in a, a blend, and we had a midship section. If we use the grid, now we have a tidy midship section. Now we'll go on to use the curves to make a curve network, and to use that network to define an X topology surface. So one of the important characteristics of X topology curves is the ability to build a curve network. And for this, we kind of combine the snapping facilities of PolyCAD with the dynamic kind of attachment capabilities of the X topology curve. So we'll start out by drawing a, a simple square of curves. And if I now continue to draw curves, obviously we get the snapping feature that we get with all curves. But the difference here is that we get the set of links shown that indicate that the curve will be connected together. So we can create a curve like that and like that. Now if we go back and edit the initial curve, because they're linked together, we get the dynamic capabilities all coming into play. It's a, it's a nice way of, again, like with the attributes, uh, setting up some design intent, creating a master curve, and all the child curves connect together. So now I have a rectangle, now I can go on to make an X topology surface. So selecting all the curves, I can bring in a surface that way. And because everything is dynamically linked, as I move the points around, everything will update. Now let's go on to build a more complicated surface. Let's add some sort of sectioning effects in. So let's add couple of curves across the shape. At this stage they don't get inserted into the shape itself. Um, let's do a little bit more so let's make these planar curves. If I set them to be plane in the X then their position is now defined in the X location or at least it should be. Uh, it's taken us a little time to update but now now with an X plane got the option 
to be all driven as one shape. We'll do exactly the same with the other curve. So now to insert those into the surface, we'll just do an insert. You can now see the surface now gets the shape of those curves. And again, if we move them, see that the surface updates. Challenges with this kind of approach is that uh, everything, all the curve tangencies are being interpolated along the length of these. So we don't always get completely perfect curvature. You can see here we've got, if we look at the isophotes, quite a break in curvature. And this is just down to the fact that the surfaces themselves don't have enough mathematical information in them to achieve that continuity. We can prove that by adding an X topology curve in the other direction. Now here I could just draw it across the surface, but if I use the spline option, and we'll take a buttock line, then I, it can be drawn across the surface in one go, and you see that as I do that, I've drawn two curves there. The continuity improves as it's drawn across the surface. You still see we have some lower area there, we've got some break in the surface. And that's just down to the way that the mathematics work. So now that we have a smooth surface, we can edit the curves. Sometimes you might want to take snapping off if we're not wanting to snap but we just want to edit. So there we have a surface like so. Uh, if we wanted to change the role of that curve, we can make it into a knuckle line. So this is where some of the surface tangency options come along. So make it into a knuckle line. We have a, a direct corner. We could turn it into a uh, X. So now it's enforcing an X tangency in that direction. Similarly for the other curve. So we start to get kind of a linear effect along there, but because it's enforcing tangency, then there's going to be a break in that shape. So with this, we can kind of start to define the kind of limits and shapes specifically by giving ca characteristic information, by adding constraints to our surface as we go through. Of course, considering that we're designing a hull, it's very easy then to set up contours and we can see standard shapes or standard output that we're expecting. So if I was to, for example, again draw a midship section, I draw the section earlier, I'd probably use the following approach. So we could start out, say, by looking in a section view. Let's start with our grid on. Uh, drawing a curve. We'll now edit that to add in the build radius. Of course, this curve is located at the origin. So if I add in, a, make it a planar definition, move that to 40 meters. And obviously we're gonna create an extrusion here. So why not take a copy? So now I have two curves. Now adding on our constraints again, and now snapping, we'll just connect these up. It's the quickest way of doing it this way, just digitizing. And now we have a set of curves, create a surface. Now we have a midship section. So it's very easy to build up these kind of networks.